Now, if I had to pick two things that were the most difficult to install, that's what we're gonna start with. One's the bottom bracket, and if you've already done that, good job. And second is going to be the headset. Now, if you're really not comfortable with either of those, one idea would be, since it is just a bare frame at this point, you could take your frame and those two pieces to your local bike shop and have them install those for you. They will have the tools and it will be a pretty quick and easy job for them. But we're gonna go ahead and do the installation. There are different types of headsets. This frame has a straight steerer tube. That means that the fork that's designed for this bike is completely straight. A lot of the new bikes are tapered now, so be aware that there's different fork styles and different frame styles. There are some adapters to go back and forth, um, but just be aware of that as you're purchasing components. So first things first, uh, you have a cup on top and bottom, and basically we wanna make sure these bearings are sitting in the right way, and we're gonna press one in the bottom, and we're going to press one in the top here. And then we've got a couple other pieces you see here. One is a crown race. This piece will go on the fork, so we'll set that aside for now. And this one goes on top when we install the fork, so we're going to set that aside as well. And this is also a spacer that goes on top. Now the fun part, actually pressing these in. Uh, now I would recommend using a tool. Now you can go buy rather expensive tool that will press these in. You can buy a $20 tool that will press these in. Um, basically the $20 tools are not going to be much different from this. Uh, and I'm going to show you this just to show that building a bike can be affordable once again. Uh, so instead of a $20 or a $60 tool, uh, this was about 6 bucks. It's a piece of all thread, two large nuts, some washers, and I've got a little tube in here to take up some of the slack. So all we're going to do with this is slide it through both of these pieces and the frame, just like this. I'm going to put this back on top. And we just want to make sure that we keep this centered, and we're going to put a wrench on top and bottom and tighten this down and press both of these cups into the frame. Now I wanted to get nice and close so you could see this little gap right here. Make sure when you put your headset on that it's all the way up against the frame. I left just a little bit there to show you what can happen if you're not paying attention. That will cause you problems later because it will start to wiggle around and loosen up and you don't want your fork wiggling around. This is a handy tool to have. Either rubber mallet or a hammer with a plastic cap on it. This one's from Park Tool, works really well. This is what I used to get that final little bit on there. Just gave it a few taps like so, and everything was sitting perfectly flush. Now on this bike, we're going to install a suspension front fork, and there are two parts we need to install on the fork before we can put the fork on the bike. One of them is the Crown Race, now this particular headset comes with a crown race that has a small split in it. Don't worry, it's not broken. It is designed that way. That makes it so it can simply slide on and we can actually push it all the way down. And in case you have a crown race that does not slide on easily like that, this is the recommended tool. This is actually for pounding the crown race onto the fork. So you'd slide it on as far as it goes you then slide this over the top, and then you would take the hammer we had earlier to tap this and tap the crown race down into place. Now if by chance you're using a used fork and putting it onto your bike and it has a crown race already on it but it doesn't match your headset, I would recommend one of these. It's a removal tool for that crown race, so it has these sharp edges on here, so you slide this down, tighten that up, and it pops it right off. This one obviously was very easy because it can be slid on by hand. Some are rather difficult to get off, but it's much easier to do with the right tool, and then you prevent any damage to your new fork that you want to put on your bike. As you recall, I said there were two pieces that need to be installed on the fork. First, the crown race, and second is the star nut. 
this is probably the most important part because this is what really keeps the fork attached to the bike. So there's once again another tool for installing this. This makes it much, much easier than trying to pound it in any other way, so I highly recommend this. Uh, this is another one of those things that if you don't want to buy the tools, the bike shop will have the tools readily available and you could ask them to install that piece for you and they could do it within a matter of minutes. Now I've got a piece of cardboard down here, that way I don't mar up either the forks or the floor. But basically what you do is get this lined up right here and you'll hammer it down in. Now it may want to work off to one side like this just keep putting pressure on it to hold it straight. Once it's all the way down, simply unscrew the tool and you're done. Now we're going to take our fork and install it onto the bike. So earlier I had mentioned uh, the bearings that go into the headset. Make sure you have the bearing in the top and the bearing sitting in the bottom. And then we have some spacers that we're going to need up on top. We have the spacer that came with the headset. And we also have this piece. Uh, it's kind of a spacer, but basically this one keeps the uh, tube of the fork centered. So we're going to have this on top, this piece next. Then we're going to have our spacers on top of that. And then we're going to have our stem on top of that. Quite a few pieces here. And then we have the cap, which has a bolt in it, and that's going to cinch everything together. So let's go ahead and put that on. Now the number of spacers is going to depend on a few things. It's going to depend on the frame you're using, because this tube can be different lengths. It's going to be dependent on the length of the tube on your fork, uh, and as well, there are a lot of people that will actually trim the fork down a little bit so they can move the bars down uh, to get into a position that they like to ride in. So initially I would recommend not cutting your fork until you've installed it, ridden it, made sure that it's what you like. And in fact, I can show you how to put it on in a way that you can test a different riding position before making it permanent. So let's go ahead. We make sure we have our crown race on the fork here, and then it's seated all the way down. So we slide this up. Next piece, our first spacer, the one that came with our headset. This one has kind of a rubber gasket on there, so it's a snug fit. Our spacers, and like I said, the spacers are going to depend on the lengths of all these pieces. So here you can see if I put one, two, three, four of these spacers I still have a lot of space here. Now let's say this is where the bars are comfortable for you and you where you want them. You could add a couple more spacers on top here and then put the cap on, tighten it all down and when it, the bike is done you could go for a ride, make sure that feels comfortable and then you know later on that you can cut off this much off the top. We want our bars to be up a little bit higher, so we're going to add a few more spacers right here. Okay, so I came up a little bit short, so I'm going to add a few more until we have just the right amount. So obviously we need one more, and there we go. Now you want to make sure when all of this is tightened down and snug that the top of the fork tube is not sticking out at all because if you have any slack there this is going to wiggle the whole thing's going to move and you're going to have a wobbly fork so make sure that there's no space up on top and I think we're going to be just right like that on this particular bike so we're going to put that nut in this is going to be screwed into the star nut that we installed into the fork. 
and we want to tighten this guy all the way down. And this is effectively what keeps your fork on the bike. Uh, a lot of times people are looking at these pinch bolts on the side of the stem, uh, thinking that that's what keeps everything together. And they may help a little bit, um, but realistically this is what keeps your fork from just falling off of the bike. So you want to make sure to get that nice and tight. And to finish that off, we have a small little rubber cap, which can go in the top of our bolt there, just makes things look nice and clean. Now don't worry about the stem being lined up straight with the forks. At this point, these two pinch bolts are still loose. Once we put the bars on and the front tires on, it's much easier to take a look at that, get it lined up, and then we'll tighten those down. So just go ahead and leave those be for now. Uh, be aware that there are different bar diameters, like everything else on a bike. Uh, our stem actually says on the top right here, 31.8 millimeters, and that's what we're using for the diameter of our handlebars. Uh, there are a lot of different widths on handlebars as well, so that's something to be paying attention to. Uh, this is a particularly wide set because it's going on a fat bike. You've got those bigger, heavier tires. Having with slightly wider bars gives you more leverage and just makes it easier to turn. Now that's not something you would notice when you just get on the bike and ride it for the first time, but it's one of those little things that makes the overall bike nicer when it's set up. So all we need to do is slide this through here. Uh, you don't need to pull this front plate all the way off. I would just loosen it up enough that you can get the bars to slide in. There we go. And then you're just going to want to take a look at them left to right, make sure it's centered. You can get out a tape measure and measure from here to the end of the bar on each side if you'd like. Uh, and then you want to make sure your angle is correct. Basically you have this little bend right here towards the middle. Uh, it should be pointing straight up and then this bend is going to be straight back. If you get into other angles, things start getting weird and the bars aren't going to be comfortable. So we get that straight, centered, and then we can go ahead and start tightening these four bolts on the front up. And you want to make sure that you tighten these evenly all the way around. So I like to look at the gap right about here and then take a look at the gap on the bottom and just make sure I work my way around. That way I don't have uh, this front plate being twisted or off center or anything uh, that's going to cause it to want to come loose or work around at any point. Thanks again for watching. If you're just tuning in, this is just one video in a whole series on how to build your own electric bike. So please make sure to subscribe, hit the little notification bell so you can see when the latest videos have come out. If you happen to show up in the middle of the series and you wanna get back to the beginning, I'll put a link to the first one or other episodes in the description. And the previous video will be over here. And the next video I'll make sure to put over here.